Satan has a name with respect to the ministry of liberty. He's called the accuser of the brethren. When it has to do with liberty, watch this. He's no longer a thief. Satan is not always a thief. He changes according to what he tries to achieve. When we talk about justice, you have to go to the court, the high court, the very court that the judge, at that point, God does not just sit there as creator. He sits there as judge, the judge of all the earth. The accuser of the brethren comes. Are we together? And that he accuses the brethren day and night. What is the accusation? I have a right to oppress this family. The reason is that the grandfather called me through the spirits and the mediums and he said, empower our farms. In return, I will give you all the female children in this family. And I have maintained agriculture. They have produced all, the, you know, from their farms. I have maintained my own part. Now a young lady, a young guy, because he came for koinonia, he's asking me to lose my 150 year old grip over that family it does not work that way watch this so if you now come and say well i think you must go no the system of justice must have a basis answer judicial people even when they met out judgment it is not based on sentiment according to section this subsection this this is the penalty that follows such a thing are we together do you know that in the court of law now i'm not a judge but I know this much that in the court of law, you can have the truth. But if you don't know how to communicate it, you will still go to jail. So having the truth is one thing. Knowing how to communicate it in a way that relates to the laws that govern you. Bring forth your strong reasons. Welcome to Chat Now Channel. We are glad you tuned in today to experience another life-changing encounter in God's presence. The Bible says in Psalm 119, verse 130, The entrance of thy word giveth life. As you listen and watch, may you experience the transformative power of God's life. Write how to tear down altars and how to rebuild altars of righteousness. We've established so far that with respect to the outcomes that these altars produce in the life of individuals and families, we have demonic or evil altars. We have godly or righteous altars altars being platforms being tables of negotiations hallelujah so when you say i have an altar it means you have created a platform and that the platform is created for the believer through words don't forget altars are built through words largely principally through speakings altars are built through words not just physical monuments. Now, there are actions of obedience and I'll come there. But the principal way that believers build altars is through speakings. Now, there is a law in the spirit I want to introduce to you now. This law was honored even by Jesus. It's called the law of substitution. The law of substitution. That means... That there can never be a void at any given time. When there's no darkness, there is light. There can never be a time where there is neither darkness or light. If it's not morning, it's night. Are we together? Are, are we together now? Yes. The law of substitution. So, the law of substitution says that with respect to this now watch this now that you cannot stop outcomes by stopping them you stop outcomes by replacing what should be are we together now it's it's you are substituting evil for good not stopping the entire process the concept of altars was so designed that at no point in your life should there be any void. That means if there is no personal altar set up by you, the altar before becomes your status quo. Are you getting the point now? You don't have to consciously set up a negative altar. If you do not rise up to define your possibility, any altar available can hurt you and harm you. For instance, you don't need to plant weed. 
No, the seeds are scattered everywhere. All it takes is for rain to fall and you begin to see weeds grow in your farm. Are we together now? But there is a way that you can see certain farms and gardens manicured. It looks like weeds never come up. It's not true. The potential for weeds are there. It's only that the gardener has taken responsibility to do something upon that farmland every day. So in your experience, you never find weed there. But it does not mean weed cannot grow. Are we together? If at any point the gardener is careless and leaves the farm, then you find out that weeds grow. So you can discover a garden that for one year you never see it bushy and based on your experience you believe that weeds don't grow weeds can grow anywhere but the gardener if he's not putting insecticides he's mowing the grass he's doing something there is an action that is being engaged to keep that garden that way it's called the law of substitution now please look at me most believers and and i i i, I say this with humble submission humble submission humble submission most believers have been taught to tear down altars and then not have any altar around their life again so whether by prayer by breaking of curses generational curses whatever it is and so they say in the name of jesus i am free and then sometimes we men of god sincerely after praying for the person the person falls rolls on the ground and then he stands up and he says that's it you are done go you are free um you are right but you are wrong do you know why because according to the law of substitution there must be a voice speaking an altar must be speaking at every given time if it is not the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus it is the law of sin and death there is no such thing as void where nothing is happening neither good nor bad it does not exist maybe just in the mind of the individual who is learning so far i'm saying this because there is a responsibility component to administering liberty that if the saints are not taught they will remain defeated it doesn't matter the kind of deliverance that is conducted it doesn't matter the breaking of yokes and curses and whatever it is refer to my message complete deliverance i teach you there that there are three levels of deliverance number one casting out the spirit influences and then number two there is what we call deliverance through transformation the ministry of light transforming you by the power of the holy spirit and then the final phase is called the discipline of conformity where you have to now use your will empowered by the grace of god to walk in keeping with the factors that keep those spirits at bay show me anyone who practices these three things you will experience complete deliverance for most people their focus is the first area man of god pray for me i have bad dreams or i have all kinds of patterns please help me and truly you pray for the person cast out that spirit and then the person is free and the person returns back you know why the demons are not afraid because they know that there are two other steps that were ignored deliverance through transformation the discipline of conformity so after praying for that person if you're a man of god here learn this when you minister to someone and is free from demonic spirit you don't just tell him okay that's all whether you are serious with god or not whether you are serious with church just go he will experience momentary testimonies by the next week he will return back and say you are such a powerful man of god you prayed for me that week i experienced promotion but the spirit still have a legal access to return because the programming in his mind remember my teaching that your mindset is your contribution to your own failure or your own success your mindset that has not been renewed can partner with those spirits and attract them back again hallelujah are we learning now so you stop the speakings of altars by raising another system of authorization that speaks something otherwise so for instance an altar that speaks untimely death an altar that speaks defeat watch this an altar that speaks sicknesses an altar that speaks failure 
an altar that speaks all kinds of trouble you don't just say in the name of jesus i've come by the blood i destroy this altar you will never find place in my life again uh -uh. what else are you speaking the bible says the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things not speak another not not just speaks something was speaking before it came since the blood of jesus was not there, the blood of abel was speaking and the blood of abel speaks judgment the blood of abel speaks vengeance are we together now yes there's no time to go there you would have seen that when cain killed abel the blood of abel was speaking and it spoke and god had it he came and said cain this blood is crying to me to speak vengeance and on account of that a curse was released upon him he even had to cry and say it's too much upon me everyone that sees me will hurt me and a mark was put upon him even at that he still became a fugitive and a vagabond it was Cain according to scripture that was the first spearheader of the campaign of rebellion against God after the fall of man the Bible says Cain knew his wife and she bought him a son called Enoch are we together now and now they built a city he built a city after that name that was what eventually graduated to what you would call the tower of babel in genesis 11. i speak the blood 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 I speak the blood, the blood, eternal cleansing blood. You don't have to cry, cause he has paid the price. Listen, what I'm about to teach you now is what I did in my own life. It's not what I was taught, it's what I practice. I'm praying that your eyes will be open. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. For someone, a way out has finally come for you. If you do not understand the law of substitution, you will never be able to silence the voices of evil altars. And you will never be able to walk in dominion. one the first key when you want to tear down altars you must also be ready to set up a righteous one if you are not ready to set up a righteous altar then do not waste your time trying to tear down one did you hear what I said every time you are tired of the speakings of an evil altar and you want to tear it down then you must be prepared to take the responsibility of concurrently setting up a righteous altar that must be initiated by light maintained by discipline number one the first key to tearing down altars is breaking the hold of those demonic altars by engaging the blood Breaking the hold of those demonic speakings. Breaking the hold of those ordinances. Breaking the hold of those demonic altars or speakings by the blood. By the blood. By the blood. By the blood. Who is learning? You want to tear down demonic altars? The first thing is not to start speaking, oh, my life is... No, no, no. You are dealing with something serious. And you are dealing with something that is on a legal basis. I remember when I was doing, um, let them have dominion, if you recall. I taught you something that I want to repeat very quickly. Please look at me. God forbid, but let's assume I'm, I'm an armed robber. And I come or came to steal in your house. Do you know the moment I hear the sound of anyone, what will I do? I will run away because I am stealing. It's illegal. Are we together? But let's imagine that someone lied to me that your house were his house. Are we together? And that he could give me access to it. And I now paid for it. If I hear you coming, will I run away? No, there is a legal basis. 
So when you are dealing with legalities in the realm of the spirit, there are rules of engagement. Are we together now? You don't just cast and bind spirits arbitrarily. Please look up. Please look up. As much as we love to cast and bind, is the reason why our casting and binding does not produce results. Because when demons are operating based on altars, there are rules of engagement. Not even Jesus Christ casted sin out of man. As powerful as God is, he did not cast sin out of man. He had to come down to the earth. Are we together? Because a law is that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. And not even God as Jesus Christ could bypass that law. Are we together? So when you want to dismantle evil altars, the spiritual instrument that is responsible is the blood of Jesus. My God, I wish I had the time. Do you know why? Because you see, the blood of Jesus is not the color red. Take that out of your mind. That's not what we're talking about. The blood of Jesus is not just the liquid that falls from a man, even though there is a physical expression to that. The blood of Jesus is a summation of the revelation. Watch this now. The revelation behind his becoming sin. Who knew no sin? That an unjust man, a just man, took upon himself the cloak of being unjust. Are we together? And that by that, that spiritual law, he died a death he did not deserve. Are we together now? And that the basis of that death he did not deserve was that the man who deserved to die in him can now find liberty. So every time you invoke the blood, what happens in the realm of the spirit is that a memorial is raised. Are we together now? That memorial echoes the fact that an unjust man went through something, I mean a just man, went through something he should not go through that means no matter the basis of the accusation because of the liberty that just man has brought you are free that is the thing about the blood you have to understand this now most believers shout the blood of jesus but they don't even know what they are saying all that just mean the liquid the red liquid of jesus like that thing you transfuse to a patient who is not feeling well you will never get a miracle that way blood is an instrument of mercy to you but an instrument of justice before judgment most people think the blood is an instrument of judgment no it's an instrument of justice it raises a memorial the judge himself being god not satan he is the judge of all the earth so every time the ministry of the blood is invoked that memorial is raised in the heavens how that a just man sinless became sin carried the sin of all the people are we together every accusation brought upon jesus was false so that every true accusation upon you by his verdict you are also free so satan has a name with respect to the ministry of liberty he's called the accuser of the brethren when it has to do with liberty watch this he's no longer a thief satan is not always a thief he changes according to what he tries to achieve when we talk about justice you have to go to the court the high court the very court that the judge at that point god does not just sit there as creator he sits there as judge the judge of all the earth the accuser of the brethren comes are we together and that he accuses the brethren day and night what is the accusation i have a right to oppress this family the reason is that the grandfather called me through the spirits and the mediums and he said empower our farms in return i will give you all the female children in this family and i have maintained agriculture they have produced all you know from their farms i have maintained my own part now a young lady a young guy because he came for koinonia he's asking me to lose my 150 year old grip over that family it does not work that way watch this so if you now come and say well i think you must go no the system of justice must have a basis answer judicial people 
even when they met out judgment it is not based on sentiment according to section this subsection this this is the penalty that follows such a thing are we together do you know that in the court of law now i'm not a judge but i know this much that in the court of law you can have the truth but if you don't know how to communicate it you will still go to jail so having the truth is one thing knowing how to communicate it in a way that relates to the laws that govern you bring forth your strong reasons bring forth your strong reasons why should satan take his hands off your life because you are tired of him you are joking why should satan leave your family and your destiny alone because you are tired of him no sir there is only one basis for the liberty of the believer christ jesus and the sacrifice christ jesus and the sacrifice if you bring yourself and your righteousness the realm of the spirit reminds you that there are three kinds of sin personal sin territorial sin and sin from bloodline you may be free from personal sin but how about the territory you are part of a territory can sin it is still sin so when you stand before the judge of all the ages the basis of that victory is the speakings of the blood the moment you bring the blood into the equation every accusation doesn't matter how many years doesn't matter every decade because you see listen when God judges he judges based on who he is not based on the situation there when God judges he judges based on his person and the Bible says the Lord is gracious and compassionate you have to understand this he is slow to anger and he's rich in love God does not desire that any man perish this is the character of the judge are we together now the blood leverages on the integrity the very nature of God with respect to what has been done in Christ once you engage the blood watch this now Satan has nothing else to say because the basis of Satan's operation is the fact that a human will was part of that negotiation. Are we together now? Somebody agreed. Satan, you can invade this family. And now you are saying he played his own part of the deal. Gave them whatever they were looking for. Fame or whatever it is. Now grandfather is dead. Now father is dead. You have come into Christ. And the Bible says those things should not hold on to you again. Just believing that they will never happen is a joke. There are rules of engagement. This is what I'm teaching you. Rule number one is that you must know how to engage the blood. Someone say the blood. One more time. Say the blood. So every time you say the blood of Jesus, don't just think liquid. Are we together now? No. Think justice. Mercy to you or for you. But justice translated as judgment to every other power. Ah, this is powerful, 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 powerful. Yes, may Rama Chiadu Wata Bandawani Sekai. Apostle, but your grandfather worshiped idols. Maybe you yourself even worship idols. And the Bible says, The soul that sinned, it shall die. It shall die if it does not come to the mercy seat. There is something called the throne of grace. You know one thing with the throne of grace? There is no qualification to get there. Christ is your qualification. The throne of grace does not have any entrance exam you write. You come. That is the throne that you can come as you are. 
provided it is when you come that you encounter mercy and you encounter grace to help in time of need who is learning now look at me let me tell you the truth I got to a point in my life where I took a careful examination of my life my family tree the realities that were before me and I knew that I needed to dismantle a lot of altars a lot of altars you've heard my story as a man of God I was being oppressed by demons not many people will be honest to tell you this people will just hide and make it it's a lie there's no point hiding vulnerability is not weakness that there was once upon a time and because of the privilege of the prophetic I will be lying down in my room and I will watch these spirits enter it's not I, I'm not talking of it's uh, you would see them I shouted Jesus like the Bible says I should shout it and they seem to be unaffected I knew that mm -mm, God has to be true there is something I do not know how could the name of Jesus be so powerless no then I found out that the name was not in the chanting of it the name was not in the pronunciation. Mm -mm. She had to water. Banda wani sekai. Yesu. to sleep and have these demons press me I could hear people speak but to wake up it was drama I dreaded night times because the moment I do you know it got to a point where I would lie down at the edge of the bed it doesn't matter how wide the bed is I would lie down at the edge so that at least I would try it would look like I was suffocating to die come on now altars they are real oh. they are you believe me on that they are real they are real i know some of the healthiest people in the world they 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 are meticulous about anything but they hit a certain age bam and suddenly they will tell you it looks like there's some pain somewhere and they tell you cancer or they tell you some prostate or they tell you one demonic something you're lying down one day you just collapse and as healthy as you are you take orange every day banana every day they still say you have low blood pressure what was you take then there are people who stop eating rice 10 years ago they're still sick they stop eating cassava they stop eating yam i'm not saying i'm not giving you a medical advice i'm just saying what is left what is left no rice, no yam, no eggs, no plantain, no cabbage, no nothing, no liquids. Whether you are fasting or not, these programmings have vowed that you must die. What you need is the blood. The blood. The blood. That Father, I come to you by the blood, not in my righteousness. That every demonic installation that predated my existence, the Bible tells me I can bring forth my strong reason and I come to the judge of all the earth I come to the judge of all the earth I come before the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things hitherto these altars have been speaking negative things over my life over my family but I come by the blood and I invoke the blood the blood upon altars it doesn't matter what programming I, it, it may not be your fault it's not a cause to come from the family you came from but you need to do something about it now before it tears your life into pieces let me tell you the truth please look up one of the biggest challenges with the church is that we are not entirely honest with ourselves 
we are more conscious of our reputation than dealing with what needs to be dealt with so there are many people who have all kinds of troubles sicknesses they are hiding troubles that they should deal with it and we just carry this fascia of things working well victory is real there's no point faking it if it is not working take responsibility and iron it out in righteousness someone said the blood yes sir the blood because for some of you based on the description you are supposed to be the next physical priest right now as a medium to carry that thing based on the description whether you know it or not and there are some of you there's this demonic thing now uh, do I go into these things hallelujah that you engage the blood you engage the blood you engage the blood that by the blood of the eternal covenant my grandfathers may have made their choice my great grandfathers may have made their choice but this man I have decided as an act of my will listen 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 now please listen listen I want to teach you how to do it and I want you to listen to me in establishing your case before the court of heaven there are two bases only two I want you to please listen number one the first basis for establishing your victory is what Christ has done what Christ has done the blood that was shed upon the cross the victory that is in Christ the sufferings of Christ the substitutionary sacrifice there you go with the word again if you ever approach the realm of the spirit advocating liberty from the negative speakings of altars and it is just based on your fasting or based on your prayer I'm not saying those things are wrong or based on church attendance any other basis outside of the sacrifice of Christ is not valid enough the parliament of heaven was only designed to honor the sacrifice of Christ and whoever becomes a beneficiary of it through Christ the second basis is the power of the will I'm teaching you the rules of engagement now the power of the will this becomes the basis of your making a defense before God that God gave everybody the power to choose so what is happening in my life is not a reflection of my choices and God is bound by his integrity to give me a chance to make my own choice who is understanding this now so that believers must have spiritual intelligence you don't just say God I'm tired of this trouble you are in heaven you are watching all of this do you want the devil to kill me before you're happy you all that lamentation does not lead to victory there are two bases this is how to approach the judge of all the earth God is father Abba Bata. but when you are advocating liberty you are approaching your father who is the judge and you must know how to speak the language of the court of heaven the basis for victory number one the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus the blood that speaks better things the blood that has annulled everything calling you out from every tribe and every tongue and every nation Lord it is true that I am Yoruba it is true that I am Hausa it is true that I am Igbo but when I came into Christ I was grafted into a new kingdom and it becomes unfair for me to be a victim of the foundational limitations that came with my natural descent are we together the first birth I didn't have the power to choose so now in Christ the second birth is by choice the first birth you appeared who is understanding this now you are speaking the language of justice so in addition to the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ the Bible says I said before you life and death I said before you blessing and cursing but these spirits are not giving a room for me to choose because it looks like the oppression vetoes my will therefore God has to come in and give me a chance if I use my own will and I choose destruction then that becomes my lot but until then 
everyone on earth by God is given an opportunity even if based on the law of time and chance the blood the blood the blood I am no longer interested in serving the idols that were served before me I am no longer interested in that discussion that happened across the table did you hear what I said I am no longer interested because I'm a child of God because I'm a child of God and because Satan is a stubborn spirit he's not just going to say ah okay I've had you mm -mm, it's not like that oh it's not like that so the blood number one we believe you are blessed by the message you just watched let us know what stood out to you in the comment section you can also support our channel by liking and sharing our videos so more people like you will be able to watch these powerful messages we celebrate you and see you in our next video thank you